Hello, welcome back to class. I hope you did your assignment, especially the calculation. Trust me, there will be a question for you on that in your exams. Today we shall talk on micronutrients. And the micronutrients are a lot, so we shall divide it into two. That's why I have micronutrients one today. So micro, as the name micro means small, small as opposed to the macro, which means large. So these are nutrients that are needed in smaller quantities. And we get it from all foods, even some of our animal products contain them, our legumes and then the animal products. But we get them a lot in our fruits and vegetables. That is why you see them, the picture there. So eating a lot of fruits and vegetables, we get almost all our micronutrients. That's why they are called protective nutrients. They protect us. So what are our objectives for this class today? We should be able to classify the micronutrients and give examples, list the fat-soluble and the water-soluble vitamins, explain the role of vitamin A and its precursors, beta-carotene, name the consequences of deficiencies of fat-soluble vitamins, and describe some characteristics of the water-soluble vitamins. So what are micronutrients? As I said earlier, nutrients that are needed in smaller quantities. And there are two groups. We have the vitamins, and then we have the minerals and the trace elements. So the micronutrients are divided into two vitamins, that's one group, and then minerals and then trace elements. And these, note that these micronutrients, they do not provide energy. They do not provide energy. It is very, very important that we get that right. Yes. They are essential nutrients to the body. Why are they essential? They are because the body cannot make them. So by all means, we need to eat our fruits and vegetables to get this essential micronutrients. They play an important role in the body. When we want to form glycogen, I told you when we eat our carbohydrates, the excess can be converted into glycogen to be stored to be used later on. You need the micronutrients to help to do this conversion. When we eat our meat and our fish, the proteins that the body will use will have to be converted or made from our fish and meat that we've eaten. And we need the micronutrients. When we eat our excess carbohydrates to, to when they are being converted into fat, or even converting fat that we've eaten to another form of fat that the body needs, because if you recall, I showed three types of fats, triglycerides, phospholipids, and steroids. They can be made. We need the, micro, the micronutrients to help us to do this conversion in the body. So micronutrients play an important role in the formation as well as breakdown of energy and the formation and breakdown of many nutrients in the body. As you do your reading, you come across catabolism. Catabolism meaning breakdown and then anabolism meaning formation. And I'm sure you come across them as you do your, your readings. So there are so many of the micronutrients, but there are five micronutrients that have been identified to be a challenge in the world. And why this challenge? Because problems have been seen solely to be associated with women and children, women of childbearing age and then children. And why is this so? because of wrong food choices, because a woman of a childbearing age should be making right food choices, should be eating right to be able to become pregnant and, and be able to take care of the baby. That is why it is very, very important. Then poor preparation methods, overcooking our foods. Then poor absorption, because when we destroy the food through overcooking, of course, we cannot absorb them. And sometimes, we, because we are not eating, the combinations are not good, they are not available to us when we eat. And then there may be other disorders that are inherent. They could be genetic disorders. That is why. But the first three are most important for us to take note because we can do much about it. But for genetic disorder, there's very little we can do. So the five micronutrients of public health importance globally, we have the vitamin A, which is a fat-soluble vitamin, and then we also have folic acid, 
which is a water-soluble vitamin. So these are the two vitamins of public health importance, vitamin A, fat-soluble, and the folic acid, water-soluble. And then we also have three minerals. And these minerals, they are basically trace elements. And they are iodine, iron, and zinc. And in these three minerals, we are finding a lot of deficiency in Ghana. And when you take iron, for example, it is one major problem associated with maternal mortality, maternal mortality in Ghana and West and Africa in general. So this week, we shall focus on the vitamins. And then next week, we move on to the minerals. So the vitamins, specifically fat-soluble vitamin A and then water-soluble folic acid. But when you talk of the water-soluble vitamins, it is not only folic acid. We usually say we have the B group of vitamins and then uh, vitamin C. So folic acid is one of the B group of vitamins. It's one of the B group of vitamins. And this vitamin plays an important role. And when we come to the fat-soluble vitamins, we have vitamin A and the precursor or the pro-vitamin A is beta-carotene beta carotene. And then we have vitamin D, also known as the sunshine vitamin. We have a lot of sunshine in Ghana, so we don't, we don't expect to have a challenge in Ghana. And then we have vitamin E and vitamin K. So basically, for you to remember, you know, the acronym, vitamin A, D, E, and K, ADEC. So when you're asked to list the vitamins, if you remember ADEC, you should be able to, to list them. It makes life easier for you. And these vitamins are essential for proper function of every organ system in our bodies. So these are general functions, yes. They also play an important role in growth and maintenance. So for growth, especially for children. So you know, when children are lacking the vitamins, it is a major challenge. That is why we're having a lot of problems with our children in our parts of the world. And one thing we should also note is that if there's a deficiency of any particular vitamin, let's say vitamin A, no other nutrient can solve it except that vitamin alone. So it is very, very important that we make sure that we have the vitamins. Yes. And that is why we need to make sure that we are not eating one food. Dietary diversi diversity is the key. Dietary diversity. So when you talk of diversification, eating from a wide range of foods, a wide range of vegetables, a wide range of fruits, not it shouldn't be everyday orange, orange, no. There should be papaw, there should be watermelon. We have a wide range of them in Ghana. So we shouldn't be eating only one thing. So vitamin A. You see, we get the vitamin A. And Ghana, animal products, is not the best source for us. Although it is the best source because that contains the retinol. We don't have, most people cannot afford the animal source. Most of us cannot afford the whole milk to buy and drink every day. So we get it from the pro-vitamin A, which is the beta carotene, from carrots, from contumere, from ademe, from boma, all green leafy vegetables, you know, boko boko and the rest. All of them are rich in the pro-vitamin A. Pumpkin, now it is very common on our market. We also have our usual palm oil, which is also rich in the pro-vitamin A. So we have to make sure we get them. And as I mentioned, the retinol from animal source, we don't have it easily available. Most people cannot afford it, but we can afford the plant source, the carotenoids. So what are the major sources? I've mentioned them. Popo is one of them. Palm fruit. So even when you eat palm, palm soup, you are getting it. And then yellow corn. Yellow corn. Right now in Ghana, there are some, we have yellow corn. So it is best that you go for it. That is richer than the white. And we are also getting the yellow cassava, which is also very good, which... Some people call it Manchi Brodier. Yes, it's because of the pro-vitamin A. That is what is there. So it is very good. But one thing we should know is that it is susceptible to extraordinary heat. So too much heat can destroy the vitamin. And I'm sure some of you might observe when you put palm oil on the fire for very long time, see the color changes. What it means that you've destroyed it. The same way when we are cooking our contumely our greens and we cook and the color changes from green we've destroyed the pro vitamin a so it is very very important that we do the cooking on low heat we don't over cook no long cooking periods and then sun drying also causes a lot because you see that the leaves when they dry the color changes from green so the same way when we dry our leaves we lose our 
vitamin A. Yeah. What are the functions of vitamin A needed for the sight, vision? Yes, so some children are born with their sight 100% perfect, but when they, they do not get enough vitamin A, yes, some are getting blind. Some are not able to see properly because of vitamin A. Vitamin A also plays an important role when it comes to reproduction. And for this, it, it affects both man and woman. When it comes to iron metabolism in the body, vitamin A is needed for the woman to have enough blood. When it comes to the man in sperm formation, vitamin A is needed in spermatogenesis. So you see both ways. So it is important that we eat the foods that we've seen. And then for growth, it's also very, very important as a micronutrient, as a, it plays a, a zambantic role. And then also in immunity, vitamin A also helps to fight against infection. So we see that most children who are deficient in vitamin A, they are also prone to infections easily. So we need to make sure that children get the fruits and the vegetables that are colored. So lack of the vitamin will cause deficiency. So one thing that you should remember is that once you know a function of any nutrient, once that nutrient is lacking, then it means that function cannot be performed. So that should tell you that is the deficiency. So there could be growth retardation, vision, the child cannot see properly, there will be blindness and so forth. The child, it is not that we know that it, it helps in immunity. So without immunity, there will be infection. So always remember, if you should forget, once you know the functions, you can talk about the deficiencies. That is how to, to remember. And one important deficiencies that we also see that can quickly tell us that, you know, this person is going to suffer from vitamin A. That may lead to deficiency. That may lead to the eye becoming blind. It's what we call the bitter spot. And the arrow on the screen is pointing to that white foamy patch on the eye. So sometimes when we do eye examination and you see that, it is important that we ask somebody to go to the hospital to see a physician so that he can be prescribe vitamin A capsules to help, because at this stage it can be reversed easily. But if nothing happens, then the, the picture you see on the screen, the eye is destroyed completely. And that is no fault of the child, but it is the parents who cause that. So that is about the fat soluble vitamin A. Now what are soluble vitamin? Folic acid, which is also an essential vitamin of global health significance. And where do we get folic from? We get it from our greens, green leafy vegetables, foliage from leaf. So all our leaves contain also folic acid. And that is very, very important. So you see that from the green leafy vegetables or green leaves, we get both vitamin A and then we also get folic acid. And But folic acid is water soluble. It's water soluble vitamin. So what that means is that we shouldn't be cooking in too much water and throwing the water away. Other food sources, include eggs, orange juice, in addition to our green leafy vegetables. And once again, that is also heat sens sensitive, heat sensitive, so we need not overcook. And what are some of the functions of folic acid? Plays important role in protein production, that is in, in cell division, because our bodies are made up of proteins. Yes, cell division, it plays an important role. Also in blood formation, in blood formation, folic acid is very, very important. That is why here in Ghana, there is the law that all pregnant women, when they visit the clinic, they are given folic acid, folic acid so that they can form blood. But if you are eating very well, yes, diet is better than medicine. Yes, so if there is deficiency, yes, for the woman, it becomes a challenge, a challenge. Anemia will occur, anemia due to folic acid deficiency and this anemia the red blood cells will look bigger than normal and this is known as macrocytic or megaloblastic anemia yes immunity will be diminished because if you recall i mentioned that it is important in protein formation and proteins are play important role in immune in the immune system you know so if we don't have folic acid we cannot form proteins as we need abnormal digestive function is also very common and then because i said most of them play a role as enzymes as cofactors and enzymes and then also cancer risk is also very high with folic acid deficiency 
Although some studies have also shown that with folic acid, because of its role in growth, it also helps to promote cancer risk. So there is a plus or minus here, which we need to understand. So deficiency in women can also lead to premature and low birth weight babies. Because of course, if the woman is not having enough blood, it means nutrients to the baby will be affected, will be affected. And therefore, the baby can be premature and the birth weight will also be low. Yes, there's also what we call brain and spider called malformation. Because recall, I told you, it also plays an important role in cell division. Cell division. So when there is lack of folic acid, yes, all these, the brain development is hampered. The spinal cord can also grow, cannot be developed properly. And together, the, it is known as neural tube defect, which is very common. Other malformation due to folic acid deficiency is the cleft lip and palate, heart defects, and then limb malformation. And in Ghana, over 1,000 cases have been recorded at the Kolibu Hospital. So this is a real situation which we can avoid in Ghana. And I'm sure when you see the pictures, you might have seen some on the telly where they are asking for, for money. This is just to show the beginning when the baby is in the womb. The arrows is pointed to the spina. It should be still. But when you look at on the screen on the left side, it is not sealed properly. And that is due to folic acid deficiency. So what the picture you see on the screen now is water, the fluid from the spine, accumulating the bulging out to look like a head. So that is what we see there. So this shows the stages. So at the back of the child, you see the baby will be born with a bulge at the back. And Ghana and Africa noted for superstitions, something, this is a... A, a child belonging to a spirit or whatever. In some cases, the child is thrown away or put at the seaside for the sea to come and take such a child. And this is still happening at this time in our history. Yes, cleft lip and palate. I'm sure you've seen some of these on the telly and then in the newspapers where people are soliciting for funds. But our common boko boko, agboma, kontomre, alefu, can help prevent these things from happening. So we need to encourage our teenagers and then our pregnant mothers to be eating a lot of greens to have overcome these challenges. And I've mentioned the anemia already. So for your take home, divide the vitamins into two and show how and why they are important and what the implications are for women of childbearing age. And as I told you earlier on, it's because of women of childbearing age and children. That is why these micronutrients have been picked out to be of nutrients of global challenge. So I'll see you next week. Remember to read before you come in so we continue with micronutrients part two, which will be the trace elements. So see you next week.